Hey everybody, it's Chris and I told you I was going to react to Amber's video that she dropped last night that she premiered. Um, I saw when she did that. I went in and paused it and read the chat for a few minutes and then I left. I guess a lot of people were mad. Um, I was going to react, but it's a school night. Kiddo is getting settled in. I just wanted to keep it quiet so I knew I would react to it today. I haven't watched any other reacts on it yet so I don't really know what she talked about. All I know is in the chat and looking at her comments real quick people are really heated. So uh, because I have a lot going on and I'm going to be starting to stream again uh, some gameplay I figured out a way now this is kind of crazy I know most of you guys don't watch these type of videos. You um, listen to them, which I'm perfectly fine with. I do that a lot. I listen to stuff and react while I'm cleaning, walking, doing whatever, driving in the car. So I decided, and if you want to watch it, it will be pleasant. I need to get some uh, grinding for uh, money and uh, supplies and, and do some stuff like that in Palea. So Amber is up on a little itty bitty screen in the middle of, at the top of the screen and I have the volume of my game turned off so I'm going to be doing that while sh we play her and while I react to her so I'm going to kill two birds with one stone um that being said guys she is oh, I find her extra punchable lately um she's very frustrating and I, I do have a lot going on at home so I, I was away from the reacts for about a week and a half two weeks and sometimes, guys, reacting to people like this, you you need to give yourself a little mental health break, okay? Because Amber just has no clue. Um, just uh, how how easy her life is and how good she has it. So if you hear any clicking or anything, guys, that's just that's just the the, the mouse for the game. <laughs> but um. That being said, uh, let's get into this and let's see what she has to say. I don't really believe anything she says these days. So um, all, all I can say is let's get into it. And I can be a little extra harsh when I'm in these moods with her. That's not for everybody. If you don't like it, I apologize. I'm the last of the Gen Xers. I come from a time where there was tough love and we were told like it is and for <laughs> there was just none of this for a lack of better terms this just pussified nature of people <laughs> these days younger people so um i know i'm not for everybody but i do need to add my own snark and humor into this and my my viewers like it if you don't it's okay if it's not for you let's get in to see what she says i will link her full video down below she is sped up for one and a half uh, speeds because she talks too slow and I can't deal with it. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So Hi, today Amber. we have a and a So I went on Instagram and had you guys ask me some questions and I listed off the ones I want to answer on my MacBook and I had 31 questions in total after going. Which first of all, you know, she absolutely did not get a lot of these questions. She says, oh, she asks for questions for engagement with no intent of actually ever really answering anything she doesn't want to answer she always says oh i got dm this i got insta dm that it's because dms are private and and we can't verify it so i believe that she probably did make these up or maybe one rogue dumbass of an am baby ask them and a lot of the answers are probably going to be freaking lies anyway so you know it is what it is been through hundreds but so many are repeats or things that i've already answered or things that maybe i just don't want to talk about so after about like an of hour course. and a half i had 31 questions and i was like that is such a weird number and i was like let's do 33. i'm 33 years old and threes are a special number in my family yeah and so amber like, you're oh, elderly so for your I really size to choose questions that people have been asking a lot of do you guys realize i, I just like, saw a video recently with her weights her weight history she's been morbidly obese her whole life yes but um do you realize that she has been at or above 500 pounds consistently with like very few exceptions of exceptions of only like mere months um, for the past, I think it's since 2018 for seven years, she has maintained over 
500 pounds. I mean, Jesus, the, the amount she's eaten and spent is insane. Four, so let's get into it because we have 33 questions that I need to answer. First question is, would you do an interview done by the H3 podcast? Yes, I would. I would be extremely nervous. Of course she would because it would stroke her ego and she thinks she's a celebrity. Nobody asked that, Amber. So, you can really tell the one she Ethan asked is. herself. He is unbiased. He has no filter. And it's like, what does he think of He'd me? He'd make you he cry, say? But Amber. I would totally do it because I love them. Does your mom remember how she found out you were gay? And can she share her version slash side of the story? So that's actually something that me and my mom have recently talked about. Because um, we like to reminisce. We talk about the hard stuff, the fun stuff. Like just things that we experienced together as mother and daughter when we were younger. And that is a topic that has come up. And I actually have asked her, I was like, mom, do you want to share your side? Because I thought you I said you were never, she was never she around. Would, she doesn't want to like, physically jump camera right now. So I think it would be like her voice or something. But I think that'd be fun to like hear the mother's side to a coming out story. I think a lot of people could actually use that. I know there are a lot of people watching me who have not come out to their parents or just like anyone in their life in general. And I think that like the Isn't more this glider have cool of coming out stories can actually <laughs> make it seem less scary. Where did you get the idea to start wearing diamonds for your makeup? Speaking of, today I decided to do That's nothing new. Here, I do that when I'm streaming, I, I get a little fun and funky with my makeup sometimes. And I just do that for fun because people see me from the, the waist or the chest up, you know, just, just for a little extra flair. I do my makeup a little more dramatically because you're on camera. Uh, this is nothing new. And like I said in the last video, Amber doing these diamonds and hair, nails and makeup and everything, like, it's like, it's like putting it, like I said, a, a fresh coat of paint or a chandelier in a freaking haunted house. It, it, it's not, nothing's changing. It don't make any sense. One here on each side. I'm just like obsessed. Honestly, I didn't get the idea from anywhere. I just remember Why I was doing my makeup like a couple weeks ago and I was like, how can I switch this up? Because the only way I ever switch up my makeup is like the length or the thickness of my winged eyeliner. And I was like, I'm gonna do something different. I'm not really an eyeshadow girly. I have eyeshadows, but it's just, it's never really been my thing. And she then thinks I she has like hooded eyes. Of my eye a lot. <laughs> she doesn't have hooded eyes. So that's like another thing that I do. And um, I actually recently started that just like a few months ago. And if ago. you so guys like, are wondering, if I didn't mention it, the game I'm playing is Palea. It's free on Switch and PC. It's a new game. It's great. If you like uh, foraging, decorating doing quest stuff like that it's you play with other people it's very friendly there's no combat or anything like that it's a lot of fun to i'm not people. an affiliate like, diamonds <laughs> i personally love it because i think it's beautiful but not only that but like you the company's a little too white so for me to be an affiliate for them honestly but i, I like the game. My winged eyeliner i feel like it suits me it's literally me you guys love it i love it have you considered cutting your hair shorter yeah but amber uh <sighs> the the bigger and wider her face gets the winged eyeliner looks more and more ridiculous because uh she has to exaggerate it more um i don't know like i said there's only so much you can do that's why she focuses so much on makeup and hair and her um earrings and stuff because she can't really accentuate or do anything with the rest of her body and really only shows herself from the like bust up because she's busted from the bus down. And um, that's why she focuses so much on that part of her. Because um, she's not doing or won't do anything to change the rest. And she's so screwed now uh, body-wise that uh, she has a very long road to uh, get, get better and... Uh, try to try to fix herself but oh yeah help it recover so yes but not the way that some of you suggest some of you were like go up to here to your shoulder never gonna happen but as i sit here you guys no know, she's never gonna do that but she does need to cut about at least eight to ten inches off no it but as i sit rag. here my hair is actually quite shorter than it was literally just two hours ago oh i cut my own hair and it already feels so much better not of course she did because she can't i'm sorry she she cannot fit into a salon chair I'm sorry, that that shelf ain't fitting. So, and she doesn't want to go and embarrass herself, which I understand. Yeah, but I haven't used heat on my hair. I also said goodbye, Tresemme. It has nothing to do with the heat, Amber. And, and people just, have been telling already. you for years, Tresemme is shit. How much better my hair looks. So here I am showing you a clip of my hair from my last vlog. And then I'm showing you my hair today where, no, it's not perfect, but it just looks- Okay, perfect. now people, I did see some comments. People got on her about cutting her hair with kitchen scissors. Would you really expect anything less from Amber? But um, 
it's still it's a little hacked but it looks better she cut a few of the uh, some of the dead end dead ends off so I, I give her credit for that it does look better uh but but she needs to cut a little more off and she needs to start having somebody come in and do it and she needs to start taking care of it and it's not busted because of the heat styling it's the myriad of things that we went over in the last video so and feels so much healthier i'm very glad that i decided to take a pair of kitchen scissors and just chop 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 how do you manage your mental health with all of the hate that you get so honestly the best way i can describe this is like say there is just this invisible layer between me and the hate that i receive nine times out of ten 99 of my life with all of the hate that i do consume it doesn't pass that layer and i think with time that layer has gotten thicker it has gotten stronger because i used to not handle the hate like i handle it now sometimes the hate can pass through it but it's very very rare and not only that i try not to put myself in situations where i see the hate i purposely don't go into my comment section because that you is the read stuff all the time amber there's reddits about me don't go on there uh gosh there's like other places and other forums you can go to i don't go to any of those places that's the, yes, one of the biggest do, reasons amber. why i don't even have twitter anymore because you constantly out of sight, out of i'm sure if i consumed hate about myself acknowledge on Stuff it that would we talk about reach through those layers that i have she's in front obsessed of me, with I herself don't consume hate about me you guys message me in private she does. And you guys are fucking amazing you guys are honestly no 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 see there so aren't all these people like messaging her and dming her like little freaking messenger pigeons and stuff like that she's just god okay like that's the stuff that i'm always thinking about that's that's the type of people that i imagine who are watching me ever get discouraged from losing weight because of your diagnosis of a lipedema since lipedema is not curable and it cannot go away yes i do get discouraged because i know that there is a large portion of my body that will not go away with weight loss and okay listen i there is somebody i want to interview that has lipedema and lost a lot of weight on a low carb diet, a keto diet, just like she was recommended to do, Amber was. Let me, let's discuss this right now, okay? Um, Amber very well could have lipedema and lymphedema both, okay? Uh, in that case, it's medically referred to as lipolymphedema. Um, lip, lipedema is not her bigger issue, okay? Her biggest issue is the lymphedema. Um, if you want to see severe lipedema, like what lip, lipedema at, at a serious degree looks like, um, look at glitter and lasers, uh, Anna. That, that's what it will look like. Um, Amber's biggest issue is um lymphedema and that is directly caused by her weight the degree the, the severity of it is directly caused by her weight by her poor diet by her lack of uh, exercise and movement um it's all directly related to her gluttony and laziness. And um, you can tell because she has that, that the severity of the deformity in her legs, especially her right leg, um, it, it's really bad. Um, and that, that can be removed. Those lymphedema masses can be removed once you lose enough weight. And the lipedema, you can get uh, procedures done on it, uh, like lipedema liposuction. Once you lose weight and you get into a um, to a healthier weight, but there's no point in you know Amber can't have those removed yet. Lymphedema masses are very fluid filled, very vascular. They bleed. That that's big wounds when they remove them. Her risk of infection and poor healing is uh extremely high so um amber clings on to this lipedema oh i have lipedema and it's not it's not curable and blah 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 okay no it, it can be extremely managed to where people look normal but um but um 
her biggest problem is the lymphedema and she didn't have it even when she was 350 400 pounds it's purely brought on by her weight by her size and she doesn't want to latch on to that because it's completely self-inflicted and lipedema is one of those things she can cling on to with it's not my fault and i can't help it i have it and and it's uncurable it's not her fault that she has it but it is her fault also that it is as as bad as it is um it's completely her doing and she is going to pay one way or the other her for her actions and her greed and her gluttony for the rest of her life. So, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. Amber's biggest problem is not the lipedema, and she could do something about it. She chooses not to. She's lazy and she's selfish. And let's face it, being overweight absolves her of all responsibilities. Hard for me to absorb. Hard for me to accept. Hard for me to process. I will always have like a disfigured body. I'll never have the body that I want. Nope. But I'm also so far past that like vein. Oh, I just want to look better. It's, it's no, all you're about, not Amber. It's, it's all about the fact that I do not want to die. So Amber, you don't give a crap if you if you die. Like you are very shallow and very selfish, and you care most about how you look. That's why you won't lose the weight because um you're afraid of the loose skin you were afraid of the loose skin back when you back when you were 360 pounds um you're definitely afraid of it now you know what i mean it is all shallow and surface level with amber oh yeah having that fear and feeling those discouragement feelings all of that is no more stronger than like the fact that I want to live. No, that you don't, feeling Amber. is so much stronger than all the other stuff. But I'm only human, so of course I feel discouraged by this diagnosis. So the next question kind of goes into like what I was talking about. What is currently motivating me to lose weight? And it's pretty simple. It's like I don't want any more health complications due to my weight, and I do not want to die anytime soon. No, Amber. What what your problem right now is is your last caregiver, Jade, ditched you because you were not. Um, mobile enough to do anything you were holding her back you hold yourself back and um your weight is disabling and debilitating to both you and the life of a partner right now you're doing the whole thing you did with everybody else where you act like you care about your health and you want to lose weight and you want to be to move and you want to live you do this to entice a caregiver for Alexis or whoever to go. No, Amber really wants to change this time. She wants to do stuff and she wants to go out and do things and travel and take care of her health. It's all an act. As soon as the person's moved in and she's settled, Amber goes right back to lazy ass, poop bun. I'm not doing shit. You can't change me. Food is my one and only true love in life. And that's how it is. That's how it always was. That's how it always will be because this bitch doesn't want to change i'm gonna rant sorry it it's gonna happen <laughs> it's gonna happen like i want to live for at least another 40 years and i know that sounds crazy um because people might say what she wants to live another 40 years okay so that would put amber at 74 years old good luck good luck girl sweet dreams because amber in my professional opinion, I, I honestly think with, with the state of her health um, and the way she treats herself and her size, and like I said, the fact that she has been maintaining over 500 pounds almost exclusively for the past seven years and she's been morbidly obese, obese her whole life and her circulation and, and stuff is so horrible. She's already had a history of like liver problems and stuff um i honestly i and the body is very resilient but i don't give amber more than about eight years i would say she's lucky if she makes it to 40 and if she makes it to 40 if she gets to be foodie beauty's age the absolute health problems the myriad of issues the um i, I wouldn't be surprised if she was bed bound and completely immobile at that point have diabetes amongst other things um it's not going to be 
a, a nice last few years of her life because she likes to put on this act right now. Oh, I'm so active and my life is so great and blah, 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 all this and that. And I'm so like, you know, active and I do all this stuff and my weight doesn't affect me like all the other my 600 pound life people. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. And, um, she's no different than them. In fact, she's worse than them. And guys, I saw on Amazon, my 600 pound life finally actually returned. Uh, so I'm watching it on, um, I'm watching it on, uh, Amazon Prime. I'm so excited. Uh, it's been over a year since it's been out and I missed it. I really love that show. But if you look in the show, you get a glimpse of what Amber's actual life is like behind the camera. Whether she denies it or not, we're not stupid. She thinks we are. Uh, but that's basically how she lives. The only thing she had going for her was youth. And at her size, that youth is really starting to wane. Like at a normal weight, 35, 34 is not old. Um, 45 or even 50 isn't old when you're a normal healthy weight. But Amber is, uh, is elderly. What is your next goal weight since you have reached your recent goal of 499 pounds? I think my next one is 469 because from my remembrance. I don't believe that she's 499, by the way, guys. I don't. I think that she is probably still whatever she says, tack at least 35 pounds onto it. I think she's still up around 540, 550. That is the lowest I remember weighing in a very long time. Years, probably like seven years, maybe more. Yep. Um, when I get there, that'll be really exciting for me. How often do you listen to music? So I listen to music every single day. I would say for hours. Nobody asked this goddamn question, Amber. How often do you listen to music, EMB? Get the Get the hell out of here. Amber, we know that all you do all day is you sleep all day. You wake up at some time in the afternoon unless, you know, because you're on mummy's schedule, you have to get up so you can go somewhere and go to a restaurant. But typically your day is wake up sometime in the afternoon or early evening and spend your day sitting, watching stuff about yourself, watching H3 and 90 Day Fiance and other completely shallow stuff, uh, listening to music, uh, maybe playing some video games and eating on top of eating on top of eating. And that's the majority of your day. You don't really get up and do anything unless you're, you know, you won't even cook. The most activity you do is when you hurple up to the to the door to get your DoorDash order. You're not walking miles. You're not taking Twinkie out three or four times a day. It's a joke. Nobody gives a shit how much music you listen to, Amber. Your taste is frankly trash. But whatever, to each their own. I'm just being nasty and being a petty bitch. But nobody asks her shit like this because watch the people on my 600 pound life. That is how Amber's life truly is when her mom's not having the unfortunate task of carting her around somewhere. Maybe like two to three hours a day, maybe more. It depends on what I'm doing. I will listen to music when I'm walking Twinkie. I will listen to music when I'm cleaning. What, you mean I'll when you're walking music. Twinkie out to the front of the, of the yard, like right out front of your door or to the room you let her pee and poop in? Now we have pads set up for Frodo because when it gets really, really cold up here, he can't always uh, go outside because he's like, an appropriately sized chihuahua he's seven pounds right now which is heavy for him he's normally around six six and a half um and i'm gonna be vlogging some walks with him this year so i'm really excited about that but um and he won't he doesn't like to wear clothes i have sweaters and stuff for him but he won't wear his little boots i have to protect his little paws so i do have we do have pads for him for if he can't go outside but um uh, we change them daily, but the, but the fact is, is like when he can go out, Frodo does go out and Frodo walks. Somebody told me they thought it was actually too far for him, but it's not. Frodo will walk. We walk him probably two to three miles a day when it's nice. There's no way she's, there's no way Twinkie's taking Amber on a two mile a day walk. I feel bad for Twinkie. When I'm showering, 
just whenever there's like a time oh, once where I'm a month. something and I want like noise, it's either that or YouTube. Do you still enjoy it doing YouTube? Yes, I love everything about my side of YouTube. She hates YouTube. She loves money. She loves being lazy. She hates YouTube. And she doesn't clean all this. Oh, I clean so much. I'm getting ready to do my spring cleaning, guys. It's going to be a disaster because I have to. I want to do a big clean out and we want to wash and paint the walls. Oh, my God. Uh, scrub the carpet. It's just going to be it's going to be a thing. But it's going to be so great afterwards. Uh, Amber doesn't clean. Amber can't bend over to reach things. She has that uh, hyper uh, mo hyper flexibility, hyper mobility that a lot of uh, obese people actually have. But she still can't reach certain things. She can't bend over and get she, she her weight, her size physically hinders her. And, 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 and let's face it, doing things at her size is physically exhausting. So there's no way Amber's just deep cleaning and stuff like she says for fun. I mean, just get the hell out of here. She thinks we're so stupid. What a, she said a joke. When it comes to filming, editing, uploading, I enjoy the whole process. No, you really don't, fun. Amber. I've always loved it. I love how I was able to turn a hobby into a... You know what? You Everyone says she does stuff on iMovie. Now, I don't really edit. I don't know how. I'm learning how. I'm going to do better. But my son did a couple... We did a couple little vlogs a year or so ago for Halloween. Took a few clips. My son took something like iMovie on my phone and clipped them together and made them for me. And he was like nine and a half at the time, 10. And he added little sound effects and um, visual effects. Like he did really good. Amber doesn't even do that. I mean, this bitch can't even be asked to make a proper thumbnail. She just takes a thumbnail. Is there any editing in the thumbnails? Is there any like highlighting or adding pictures or adding text? No, I mean, at least I do that. I mean, if you look up lazy in in the freaking dictionary, there would be a picture of Amber. Granted, it would have to be an extra wide panoramic picture of Amber, but it would be there. Yes, I'm dogging on her size, guys. I'm sorry. I know it's the low hanging fruit, but once you get to her size, her size affects everything. It just does. And to get to that size, you have to live such a selfish, greedy lifestyle that I'm sorry. I don't find it. I don't find it very appealing. So whatever. I'm, I'm a hater. So haters are going to do the hater thing, right? Job into something that makes it to where I have a roof over my head. And you know what? A lot of people actually like that. I'm kind of like, I'm so raw guys. Fuck. Right. Ain't that what she says? Like, People, a lot of the people who watch me like that I don't pussyfoot around and sugarcoat stuff because I do read the farms and I get there's a lot of smart people there that one they're funny but two they give a lot of valid insight and a lot of them get on how oh I can't stand how reactors all just just tippy toe around her and kiss her bud and pander and stuff like that and I don't I am not of that mindset. Like I said, I grew up in a generation where we were told the hard truth and it was tough love. You were responsible for your actions and your behaviors and, and life didn't kiss your ass. And not only that, the same too, like, okay, now I, I could be making a lot of people mad here. I'll risk it. Like they're not happy about how people are pandering to Becky calling her back and they them. Okay, listen, I know there's true transgender people. I have a friend who has true gender dysphoria and lives life as a, as a female. Becky just is confused. She has whatever. I'm not going to call Becky back. And I'm not going to refer to her or anybody else as a they, them. Nobody's a they, them. You are either a he or she or one or the other. I'm not calling anyone they, them, it. I grew up in a time where that's rude and I just don't believe in it. As much as these people have the right to believe in that type of stuff, people also have the right to not believe in it and therefore not participate in it. If you're somebody like Buck Angel or Blair White, where you really live the life and present and you have diagnosed gender disorder, that's one thing. I will always refer to Buck as a he. I will always respect Blair as a woman. But Becky is not Beck. She's not they. Becky is a female. And she just, she, she, she has a lot of serious mental issues. A lot of them are stemmed from, from the abuse she, she took from Amber. And I do hope that she gets the help she needs. But 
don't come for me in the comments because I call Becky a she and called her Becky. Uh, it is what it is. But anyways. Every single day, I am thankful for you guys. So thank you so much for that. No, you're not Amber. You hate us. I thoroughly love doing and I will forever love it. I really truly believe that. I understand why a lot of people might think I don't enjoy it anymore. Because Amber, I don't you can't as as stand us. The reason for that. You can't stand with, your like, audience. You talk to us like we're dog shit. Like we're trash. Like we're beneath you. You try to pull so much wool over our eyes because you think we're stupid. It's it's frankly insulting. And this is why I need to walk away from her sometimes. Because... um. It, it's rough to be looked at as just uh just money enjoyment or if i actually like youtube still so no worries i still love it and i'm here to stay what's your relationship with your dad like I actively do not have a relationship with him and i haven't had one in a very very long time i think out of the 33 years that i have been alive i think i have only had a true relationship with him for maybe a year of my life and that was when i was around like 11. i was living in an all girls group home and i think at the time then i'm not being mean why were you so upset when you said he was in the hospital in critical condition which we never got an update on like remember she was like oh i'm just i can't diet today guys i'm going through something my dad's in the hospital in critical condition and it's affecting me so much that, that i'm crying and tearful and i'm a mess but and i have to eat my feelings but now she's like, oh, I didn't have a relationship with him. I barely had one for a year. Now, story time about me real quick. Uh, for I, I've never really shared this on my channel, I don't think, but I was adopted. I was adopted into my own family because uh, I was raised by a mom and a dad who were biologically my aunt and uncle. Because my biological mom was an absolute shit stain on uh, the face of society. And my father had a drinking problem. Um... I do think my father's drinking problem a lot came with having to deal with my mom. But one thing I can remember, because I lived with them until the age I was four and my sister was one. And that's when we got um, adopted. But um, you can remember a lot from those ages and stuff like that. And I remember a lot about my dad for four years. He was in my life. And let me tell you, I hated my mom. She was horrible. She was so just awful but my dad would have done anything for my sister and I he loved us as soon as he came home he was picking me up spending time with me taking me out to the porch or to go do something he was amazing and he was wonderful so even though I didn't have him and he did pass away uh, in a state in the south when I was 19 um, and my mom let me know that my biological grandparents called me and let me know but i i think i had a right to be upset because i loved him i remember him i know he did a lot for me uh and 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 i didn't cry per se but i was like oh man that sucks because it would have been nice to maybe get in touch with him again at some point in my life but amber purely used that as an excuse to like uh eat and have bad behavior and to get sympathy points and to deflect from something bad she probably did i was re i really believe amber doesn't care about anybody except herself amber only cares about amber she doesn't love people truly she doesn't care about them she loves what people can do for her what they can provide her can they take her to places in the middle of the night do they have a license do they have a car will they cater to her will they eat with her will they that will they give her a place that that's all she cares about my dad was doing really well in his sobriety and he would come visit me and i lived actually in upper lake california at the time so my dad, he would rent out boats and we would go on the boat and we would go fishing. And those are the memories, <laughs> sorry, whoa, okay. Those are the memories that um, I, I like to remember. I'll probably never have a relationship with him Nice again. fake and tears, Amber. Due to my choice. Why would he want a relationship with you? God, just let him, no offense, look at you and look at you online and go, oh my God, for as much of a shithead I am, my daughter is a toxic shithead too. I'm better off without her. She is enough to threaten anybody's sobriety. I worry about her mom falling back into bad habits, having to deal with Amber and having the stress of Amber constantly wanting, wanting, wanting. Do this, do that. Drive me here, drive me there. Pay attention to me. You know what I mean? I, he just doesn't it's, a, it's a real he fear. He's still in his addiction and it's bad. And, and you know what? You have no room to talk, Amber, because you're still in yours. 
Yours is worse than ever, and I don't care what you say, you're doing not nothing, not F all, to try to change it. Problems and he's going Birds to of a feather. Him, oh my God, very much. I love him unconditionally. I love him with all No, of you me. don't, I Amber. That me having a relationship with him would do more harm than good, and that's just reality. Yeah, to him. It would do it. more harm so to I him. So I think that if you have a large amount of weight to lose, and you're obviously under doctor's supervision, and they think it's the right thing for you to do, and now you're just sitting there like, hmm, should I do this? I would say yes. Give it a try. See how your body reacts. I know for me, I had some unpleasant symptoms, but ultimately in the end, Wait a I'm What? Is that the Ozempic? So if you're no. debating... I'd say try it. Ozempic has saved a lot of people. Yeah, you know what Amber's uh, very unpleasant symptom was? It, it affected her appetite and she couldn't eat as much. That was her symptom. This gallbladder stuff is is just a bunch of hoopla. It's, it's just an excuse. It wasn't her gallbladder. I firmly believe Amber stopped because the medicine was doing what it was supposed to do when it was working. And Amber will n not have anything take away her food or her appetite or her ability to stuff herself. Um, no, no, she will eat through anything. She was, she admitted later she was taking a ton of Delta eight to try to stimulate munchies to eat through the Ozempic. I mean, what the actual hell lives. And it has made a lot of people lose weight. And I feel like that's really important for health reasons. So it's really yeah. important. So this kind of goes into the last question. Why are you open to Ozempic again, even if it can mess with your gallbladder? Because rapid weight loss, yo-yo dieting, losing a large amount of weight, all of that messes with your gallbladder regardless. I'm the queen of yo-yo dieting, you guys. Amber, you're not really the queen of yo-yo dieting because you never s stick to anything long enough to have considered yourself being on a diet. And no matter what diet she's doing, no matter what plan she's on, she can never just take it at face value and do it right. She can never just do the damn thing like she says. She always have to change it or adjust it or tweak it to be her way, which ultimately means just she tweaks it so that she can still eat what she wants and have what she wants and justify eating what she wants. Um, it's a joke. I mean, you, you got to stay on a diet more than three days or four days. To, to justify having tried it. Like I'm, today's like day 29, I think of Lent. And I've been on my diet, my Lent diet plan for 29 days. And even then I consider that a, a pretty short amount of time to, to be giving a diet a try. Now that it's definitely enough time to start to like notice things, but um, it's still not very long. And I'm not like, patting myself on the back and oh you're so great you're so amazing no it's like it's just 29 days and amber can barely last 29 freaking minutes is know that i want to lose a large chunk of weight so it's like my gallbladder has had issues in the past no you don't amber you don't want to lose a large chunk of weight for a myriad of reasons we've discussed and beaten to death like a dead horse on this channel already due to the yo-yo dieting into the weight loss so it's like What's another thing? If I'm being supervised by a doctor and they're like, you know what? It's fine. I think your gallbladder will be fine. Then I'm going to do it. I'm not going to not do it. Can you see me like no. right now? Oh, can you because can you see me right now? Like you can't, but just picture it. I'm like ready to bash my head against the keyboard. If a doctor tells me it's okay, I want to, I'm, whatever he says, I'm going to try it. Amber, you have gone against every single effing thing any dietitian, nutritionist, doctor, surgeon, nurse practitioner, you have gone against every single thing any one of them has told you to do. Like I said, you tweak it to make it your own or you just don't do it and it's not right for you and it doesn't work for you for one reason or another. When the fact of the matter is, is that goddamn would if you would just stick to it. She is just... I've been having a lot of trouble with some some mental and physical cravings the past few days, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not doing great on this vegetarian, pescatarian type diet. Um, and the weather has been going from extremely hot to extremely cold. And all of it's just messing with my Lyme disease, causing flares. And, and frankly, I'm just, I'm a little crabby. So <laughs> I'm a little short with her today. And this is, this is why. <laughs> Because it has already allowed me to grow. This is the most independent I have ever been in my whole entire life. Oh, I feel you're growing all right, girl. I um, she's not independent, though. She talks about her independence, but 
she can't even get an Uber by herself. Because I even said that. She can't ride a bus. She can't get an Uber. Guys, she can't fit into most Ubers. She would have to specially request a big SUV like Uber with a step up because she couldn't get into it. She can't get into an Uber. She can't use a bus and do public transportation. People quit telling her to learn how to drive. Do you see the state of her, of her size of her stomach, let alone that's not even getting into her legs. She can't stand on a scale properly. Her feet are splayed outward because her legs are so huge and deformed. She can't drive. So stop like Karina Kaboom. Stop telling her to get a license and take Ubers and stuff. She physically is past the point where she really can't do it. So I'm a surprise. she can barely fit into the passenger seat of a car. So she depends on mommy and delivery services and mail order for, for absolutely everything. She's, she's, the opposite of independent. If her mom said, screw you, Amber, today and left her to her devices and Aunt Tammy or Grandma or somebody else didn't step in, Amber would be so screwed. She, she'd be calling Becky, asking her to come back because she needs somebody. So this independent thing, get, get the hell out of here. I feel my emotional health improving. I feel my physical health. I am losing weight. I am independent. Yes, I don't drive. Amber, you're not independent. And it's you're you're not lacking independence purely because you don't drive. It's because your weight you've hindered yourself and you're emotionally stunted. But you're not losing weight and um even if you are, it's going to be temporary. It's all just an act to find a new girlfriend. And um <laughs> oh god, I, I don't know. She just she, she makes me crazy, guys. She absolutely, absolutely makes me crazy. If a lot of people don't, though. You can be an independent person and still not drive. So yes, yeah, you can be an independent person and not drive if you can fit in public transportation. If you can walk places. You can't. She is, she would be considered, she talks about how mobile she is. Guys, she would, in medical terms almost be classified as immobile. She she would medically be classified as severely limited mobility wise. So ugh. growing and improving as a person, like living on my own. Question for me You're is You're not improving as a person, Amber. You don't see anything wrong with how you act and how you behave. You've said whenever you break up with people, I, I don't know what I could have done different. I, d I really don't think I did anything wrong. I didn't do, it's always everybody else's fault. Amber, you can't see the faults in yourself and be honest with yourself or a therapist or a doctor. That's why none of your therapy or none of your treatments work. One, because you won't stick with them. Two, because you're not honest with them because you have such a high and mighty view of yourself that, that you can't see the forest through the trees. And you're never going to change your behavior. Like we all have behaviors that, that we're not proud of parts of our psyche and be, that, that are not flattering. Right. But you work on those and you have no desire to work on them, Amber, because you think you're freaking perfect. Grow as a person here, or am I eventually going to want to move on and go somewhere else? I don't know. What's one thing people rag you about online that you feel you should absolutely stay there with your mother. Because I'm telling you, the older she gets and the more her mobility is hindered, um, the harder it's going to be for her to keep moving around and chasing new girlfriends and new places uh, when she breaks up with them. Because inevitably, whoever she starts, she'll find somebody else. Maybe this Alexis, maybe somebody else. But she's eventually, they're going to break up. She's never going to have a relationship last the uh, unless like she croaks before before they have a chance to dump her but family tends to stick together i hope that's kind of what they're doing with amber now uh she's best to stay put and date somebody local in that area or somebody that is willing to move there she should never move away from her family again because she's getting to the point where she's going to need them bad about so by rag me i'm assuming the person meant like something that people like constantly bring up and the first thing i think of is just like my ignorance with like certain words that i've used years amber like it annoys me because i do believe she mispronounces some things on purpose to get a rise out of people but what really bugs me is she um 
she's not that bright, guys, okay? I do firmly believe her IQ is lower than her BMI, okay? And that's okay. That's okay, all right? Not everybody's a genius. Not everybody's Mensa Lynn here with the 140 IQ. But she acts like she is so much smarter and so much better than everybody else. That's what's insulting. Um, I take it as it is. In fact, I catch myself talking in a more dumbass manner from listening to her too much. If I listen to her too much and watch too much Amber, I find myself dumbing down for a little bit. Like, you know, my, my brain cells go on strike for a few hours. Um, it is what it is. Amber talks how she talks, but a lot of the trolling is, is overkill. But I definitely, I do just think a lot of it is, is that she's not that smart. She barely finished high school. And guys, she didn't even, she didn't get like 3.9 GPA, like she said, or whatever. She went to a continuation school, which had below state standards for passing. And she barely barely slid through that. I guess her foster parents really struggled to get her through. Um, and it's okay. When you do what Amber does, you, you don't need to be smart. But it is what it is. Years and years ago. Like I'm talking over seven years ago. Since then, I have apologized and learned, owned up to my mistakes. And I think that's literally the only thing you can do when you're ignorant towards something is own up to your mistakes, apologize, learn, and grow from that. Do you think the therapy you did for weight loss surgery helped you? Because as a viewer of eight years, I have noticed a huge positive change in you. Well, thank you for saying Nobody that. wrote that because there is no positive change. There's no positive change in this one. Who the hell would have wrote that? Some dumb shit, obviously. Was that Aline Desim? Did she write that? Um, I don't believe that therapy did anything for her because I do think she went to some of the treatments and stuff like that. There's like debate on if she even went to the program after the seminar. I think she did, but she wasn't honest in her therapy sessions. And did you notice everything she talked about? She veered the therapy sessions away from her issues with food and her behaviors and veered off into, oh, my childhood, my trauma, all this and that. Get the hell out of here. Um, and she's not honest with the, the, the practitioners. So that's why she doesn't get anything out of it. That's why she has not changed and she never will change. But let, let's listen to this excuse. That actually means a lot to me. I also noticed it as well. But I think that the therapy definitely helped. It helped a lot because I think that might be the first time in my whole life, and I've done a lot of therapy in my life, but that is the first time in my whole life that I've ever seen one psychologist for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, and, and the only on. reason you did that was because you absolutely had to, because you know, knew that you had to stretch that out as long as possible, because you knew when you inevitably quit or got rejected, Jade was out the door, because you were too much of a, of a dead weight for her. On end. And it's almost as if like my whole weight loss surgery journey was just like meant to happen for that very reason, because it's like, I've learned so much about myself and- What weight loss journey? You couldn't even main lose and maintain a pound, a pound a month or a pound a week. So many like situations from my past, especially like in my childhood, where it's like, if I would even think about it, like instantly tears. Amber, I had a horrend, I had a simultaneously a an amazing childhood and a horrendous one based on things that happened. But I don't use that as an excuse to be a shit person now. Yes, things that happened affected me forever. But I don't use that as an excuse to be a mean, conniving narcissist, to be lazy, to not do anything, to be self Like, you, you have to get over that. A lot of people go through horrendous things, but they do the work to get past it. She doesn't want to because if she gets past it and works on herself, they may expect her to lose weight. And if she loses weight, she'll be expected to get a job, walk her own jo dog, learn how to drive, do better vlogs. She, she would... That people would expect things out of her. Right now, her size absolves her of all responsibility and uh, stuff like that. So it's never going to happen. Now it's like I can talk maturely and clearly about those situations where it's like I'm okay and I'm here and I'm well. I, I feel myself healing from things that I never ever You're not well, with. Amber. And getting diagnosed with PTSD and also BPD, it opened my eyes tremendously. It's like things that I used to not be aware of, I'm now 
aware of and I'm able to like rationally be like, okay, so this is the- And what are you doing with it, Amber? What are you doing with it? You're not going to therapy. You've been in Oklahoma for a half a year or so. You haven't found a new therapist, a, a new primary care doctor. You're not talking to a doctor or a nutritionist, which frankly is a waste of resources because she's not gonna listen to them anyways, but you're not doing shit. You're not even getting online treatment. Reason you're this way, now it's your choice to like find that rational side of you. Yeah, it's your choice. Take a deep breath, calm down. But you won't do, right do it because it's so takes work. Kind of and we all know even mental work is too much work for our girl. Because of the answer that I am going to give. The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only do I have BPD, but I have massive, massive anxious attachment issues. Like it is so freaking bad. But when I'm in love with someone, they be- Yeah, you have massive attachment issues because you need somebody there 24 seven to do for you and be your little whipping boy and drive you wherever you wanna go. You need to have 24 hour access to a driver and a car and, and a slave. So that that's why she loves somebody, guys become my everything and i know it's because of the bpd i know it's because of the anxious attachment no so it's it because so you're greedy and lazy amber like my emotions my feelings my thoughts the way my day goes etc etc is all based on the way that they are treating me one small change or tweak in tone or words can literally feel like the end of the world to me i never understood why i always thought i was just dramatic that's what i was called you know my whole life in relationships it's just like you're dramatic why, why are you so irrational why do you act this way like you're just being crazy like Hearing those things constantly, it's just like, yeah, that's how I felt. Because like, when they leave, she's like, oh my God, you mean you're leaving, you and your car are leaving me? I'm a queen. And it's just like, no, like now that I know the reasons, like, wow, I have BPD. That's why I'm doing this. Again, like, get treatment, Amber. Normal. It's not I an excuse for rational. everything. Having that answer has helped me so much. Why? Like, what no happened? Idea. How but did it help you? Have... You got diagnosed and then, then you never freaking went back and you're not getting any help now. How has it helped you? Jesus, tap dancing Christ. An answer, I'm gonna actually give an example. So say someone I'm in a relationship with usually messages me every morning at 9 a.m. and says good morning to me. That's something I'm- Yeah, because, because you've messaged them a hundred times. And chances are they probably don't message you at nine in the morning because they know you probably just went to bed an hour or so ago. So you're not getting, oh, don't message Amber until five o'clock. Used to, that's something that I expect. So if it comes 9.30- Oh, did you hear that? I oh, start... that's something she expects. See, be on it, be on it, whipping boy. You gotta message me because I expect it. On your lunch break at work, you better be on the phone with me because I expect it, I demand it. See, this bitch thinks she's a queen. Oh. Start to think they hate me. They this is gonna be a shit talking video. On me. That's where my brain goes. Both her her side and mine. Automatically. I'm not gonna lie. It would probably start happening around 9.03 a.m. So then what that would cause me to do is text them. Why haven't you talked to me? Is everything okay? Like multiple, multiple texts. Because not only is that my BPD being like triggered, but it's also my- Amber, that is so juvenile. Like 15 year olds, 19 year olds do that. Once you grow and you're like mature, you're supposed to grow out of that kind of behavior anxious attachment being triggered but now that i have the answers where in the past if i did that that would just be me being dramatic i'm a crazy girlfriend like what the heck are you doing now it's and you are first of all amber you are but second of all okay so what you're trying to say is that just getting that diagnosis hearing those words amber lynn you have bpd that fixed everything for you that cleared everything up that made everything so much better really there was no need for any other therapy or anything just hearing it did the trick do you hear why this is so stupid it's like if that was to happen i would send one text you okay babe you know a simple you okay yes i'd still be like on the inside having a little bit of anxiety like oh my god what's happening because i can't change those things about myself right now that's gonna come with time that's gonna come with therapy that's gonna come with help but the fact that i'm able to stare the same situation so amber what in the ever loving hell are you doing in the face whereas it happening three years ago and i freaked the f out or it happening now and i'm like it's gonna be okay in berlin i thoroughly feel like my psychologist from kentucky changed my life like because i'm able to see things so different than i was prior to the diagnosis trust always. me i know it can be always everything's so for... different she's so much better guys yet this this woman has not changed in anything other than be nice, Chris, than her physical appearance and age in 10 years. 
in at least five or six. Okay, let, let's say that. She has changed not at all. If anything, she has backslid. She has gotten worse. And, and the fact that she thinks she hasn't shows you just how absolutely delusional it is. The fat is, the, guys, being morbidly obese, being obese does affect your brain and your cognitive abilities. And I think Amber's brain is officially just full of lard at this point. And she's going absolutely crazy. to be with someone like that. 100% agree. But it's also exhausting for me. It's very exhausting. Um, but I try my very hardest to be upfront with... Oh, it's exhausting for you, Amber. Well... My gosh, it's a, it's a shame that it's so exhausting for you considering how much you work and all of your jobs and life and family and kids and all that other stuff you run after and all those responsibilities. Heaven forbid, I can see nothing should be exhausting for this woman except physically waddling her body around. That's the only thing that should be exhausting for her because she's carrying the weight of four normal sized women. Nothing else in her life should be exhausting. And you know what? And she could change all that. And I may sound like a raging see you next Tuesday, but I would still want Amber to change. Like I still wish she could lose weight and she would actually give a shit about her health and stop being superficial and worry about extending her life and losing weight and working on herself and becoming a better person, facing her demons. I would love to see that even in the most awful of people and Amber and foodie. You know what I mean? If she asked me for help, I like a freaking dumbass would probably try to help her. But but you, you can't want somebody's health and well-being more than they want it for themselves. The person that I'm interested in, like, these are my issues. <laughs> this is sometimes how I react to certain situations. I just feel like it's very important to have open... All I know is if Alexis or whoever it is that's interested in you is in fact interested in you, that should be a red flag and you should run away, Amber, because them being interested in you for many reasons is a massive red flag. I mean, they have to... They have to be so jacked up in the head and, and have problems and be a feeder or a degenerate or something. Uh, I'm not trying to be mean, but nobody at this point should be interested in Amber Lynn Reid. Um, around anything in a relationship, but especially mental health and the way that you react as a person. How many times have you ordered takeout in March and what was it? So today's actually March 12th and I've only ordered takeout three times. I don't believe that. I believe she ordered three times that day. Uh, I guarantee she probably ordered about 20. Yeah. So I'm actually very proud of that. Like, round of applause. I mean, and again, really Amber, possible. stop being proud of every little freaking thing. Be proud when you've actually lost weight and you're not just fluctuating and taking a big poop or whatever. Like, be proud when you get down to 470 or 480 and you can jump on the jump and hop on. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a joker. When you get on the scale and prove it with your mom, like, recording a, a legit way in and and you're actually moving and doing things and getting treatment and getting therapy be proud then don't be proud for every little damn thing this is what happens when you have a generation of people who were catered to and pandered to and, to and told you're perfect and they got freaking 10th place trophies and jesus would order takeout a couple times a day so i would say i'm very very proud of that what show did you audition for last year so i am friends with someone from a thousand pound best friends and we thought it would be a good idea for me to be on that show so she talked to the producers and they're like you know what let's give her an interview so i had an interview feline was my girlfriend at the time and she was 100 percent supportive we knew that we were gonna have to actually move no 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 jade jade was your girlfriend at the time to a different state to be a part of that show and we were both willing to do it we were willing and ready i did the interview it actually went amazing but i never heard back from them and i'm not gonna lie to you this happens a lot <laughs> Because I guarantee, Amber, because you're so demanding, you're like, I want to be on the show, but I want to call the shots. I won't show my legs. I won't do a shower scene. I won't be honest about how much I eat. I won't show that I'm a glutton. I won't show my mobility issues. I I'm perfect. I'm just a freak of nature. I don't know why I'm like this. That's, that's the reason why. That, and probably because Jay definitely didn't want to be seen on national TV with you. So it would have been hard to film you and your life with with her not wanting to be shown at all and you living together. I have been interviewed for a few weight loss shows 
and it always goes really good they like hype me up and they make me feel really good but they never call me back they never even tell me sorry we didn't choose you because you're like, too demanding so, it would have been you're an delusional. amazing experience i would have absolutely loved it um because the girl i'm friends with from that show i don't want to like say her name because i don't know how she would feel about that i'm sure she wouldn't care but like y'all you know me i'm afraid like the doc scene i might say oh wrong. guys amber she's friends with famous people that are on tv because she's so amazing and she's better than all of us she brags about this all the time guess what like she's not the only person like that i i have friends i have a very good friend who worked on the crew for animal planet and finding bigfoot he was on the show a couple times i have a very good friend who's near and dear to me we have each other's phone numbers he sends my son christmas presents we're very very good friends in the cryptozoology uh field and stuff like that he's been on national geographic he's at his own shows he has his own podcast he writes his own books um and we're on a personal level like that if he comes to pennsylvania he's staying here we're getting together he's gonna we're gonna hang out and do the thing like i said he sends my son christmas presents and stuff like that we're very good friends bigger than anybody amber's friends with but i don't brag about it all the time you know what i mean i don't go oh my god i'm so much better than you guys because i'm friends with somebody who is on tv you know no i value that person and i'm flattered that he considers me one of his very good friends, but I would still be friends with him and still be close with him if he wasn't famous and if he wasn't on TV and stuff like that. Like right now, he's not actively doing that stuff. Amber would not give these people a, a second glance if, if she didn't have some sort of bragging rights to be talking about them. Thing. Like I have become more private on my channel. I do want to get better with that and start sharing more, but it's hard to balance. You say that every two or three months, Amber. I, I want to share more with you. I want to be more open with you guys. I want to be more honest. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you be caught in your lies and you are embarrassed about how your life truly is. So you have to keep fabricating all this crap in your head. It's like, what am I allowed to say versus what am I not allowed to say? I don't want anyone mad at me. So, but yeah, it was a thousand pound best friends. And I don't know, it just would have been, it would have been great. Like, I, I really do feel that. Do you consider yourself a sexual person? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh my absolutely. God. Okay, listen. I'm going to let her answer. I would consider myself to actually be a very sexual person, especially like if we vibe in that way, like sex. If you consider food and eating sexual, then yes, Amber is an extremely hypersexual person guys amber is not interested in sex she i believe she's firmly asexual she got hickeys from jade okay so she could brag and go look i do sex stuff i've got hickeys you know pretty soon i'm gonna get invited to the prom you know what i mean she's she's not sexual she has no interest in it she doesn't love people or attract people that way she is only attracted to herself you know nobody else is as attractive or sexy or hot as she is in her own mind and she doesn't get pleasure from sex. first of all okay let's be honest sex is work to some degree it is work it takes effort it, it takes a little bit of physical activity right even if you're just laying there starfishing it you gotta do something um amber can't physically do that and she wouldn't enjoy it it would, it would be so hard and physically difficult and exhausting for her to engage in actual sexual activities that she may actually, her heart may actually crap out. Like she might have the big one right there. And I don't mean the big O. She might have the big one if she actually attempted to have actual sex. Um, and the logistics of doing things with amber with somebody that size like even doing something with foodie size is extremely difficult you know what i mean with somebody like amber you would need like a team to help you uh, lift and push and move and stuff i mean it's physically that do you see oh, i'm a 600 pound life how many of these people do you see admit Oh, one of the reasons I want to lose weight is I'm not a real partner for my, for my, well, especially women, you know what I mean? Because sometimes men, they, they're a little more flexible than women are, but like they say, I've never been intimate with my partner. We've never been intimate. We can't do that. I'm too big. I'm unable to. 
And, and it's just, it's a truth. It's a fact of life. I'm like 40 to 75 pounds overweight and it is a lot of work for me. Thank God I ain't having it and I don't want to anytime soon, but um, it, it, it would be difficult. So Amber, she, she just likes to talk like that because she thinks it makes her one of the cool kids to talk about sex stuff and hee 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 and, and all that. Like, you know, like my 11 year old, you know, he'll sit there and be playing a video game with his friends and, and they'll do something and someone will go, Oh, what the balls. And then my little, or you say, Oh my God, go get the, and my 11 year old, hee 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 balls. You said balls. You know what I mean? That's like, it's, I expect that mentality out of him. He's an 11-year-old boy. Amber's a 33-year-old woman child. This is why she acts this way. I'm glad I wasn't drinking. I would have spit it out right on my computer. Every day, um, I'm a daily sex type of girly pop. So do you have a current love life? So I actually what? do have a current love life. And it is with Um, Maybe I should have vetted this video before I reacted. She said she's a daily sex type girly pop. Okay, again, she's playing with her words daily sex means daily eating for Amber because that's where she gets her her O's is from eating with my valentine there was a phase where I was talking to multiple people again childish oh my valentine Gah. can you hear my eyes rolling into the back of their, my head right now once and my feelings grew here and there and this and that and I just realized that like talking to multiple people at once is not me it never has been I never did anything like that before. Yes, you like, do, Amber. Oh, try it out. Talk to different people. And I did. I experienced it. Great. It's just not for me. So my Valentine is the only person that I'm interested in and the only person. And by that, that she means not a lot of people are interested in her anymore. <laughs> she doesn't have anybody taking the bait. I want to be interested in and that I will be interested in. So yeah, I do have a love life. What five things would you want your partner to be like? I'll name some things like obviously like trustworthy. Oh, okay. Trustworthy even though you're not trustworthy, you want them thinner and more able-bodied than you, but they can't be pretty and they can't be feminine and they can't actually be thin because, you know, then somebody else might be interested in them and they might leave you. Um, they need to be a pushover. They need to be a doormat. They need to be a yes man. They need to be willing to overeat and indulge in bad habits with you. They need to be willing to agree with everything you say. Definitely need to have a valid driver's license and a car and the ability to get insured. Um, is that what she's going to say, guys? I think that's what, what she means, but I don't think that's what she's going to say. I'm loyal. I want someone who's loving and affectionate, like with their words and physical touch. I want someone who's obsessed with me, like mutual obsession. See, right there. What? Oh, I, I want someone who's obsessed with me. Mutual obsession. Amber, love is not about obsession. If my partner, that you know, we're kind of in between like full on relationship and it's a weird situation guys I don't know maybe if I ever do a membership I'll do a chat with me and we'll we'll get into the more stuff but that not for the the main channel but the fact is is if somebody I was dating was obsessed with me that that's not healthy Amber for her and, and, and that's how oh I want someone to be obsessed with it she wants somebody to be obsessed with her because she wants somebody to be willing to be at her beck and call and do absolutely anything she wants to keep her happy you know what I mean it love and obsession there's a fine line between the two but they are not the same and obsession is not healthy green flag coded for sure and I want someone who's like weird and funny and quirky and silly because that is very much me and I want to laugh with you and be weird with you and I just love that like someone with a good sense of humor who is your favorite ex I'm gonna say Feline is wifey number one the same as wifey number two wifey number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten are all the same person has Nikocado Avocado apologized yet for employing okay so you know what <laughs> do you see how she just blew over that wifey one two three four five is all the same person blah 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 next question Amber You've been lying to us openly to our faces like we are dumb and, and, and shit on the bottom of your shoe for two and a half years. You don't think that admitting that, coming out and actually admitting it because we knew it, but you don't think that admitting that justifies some more further explanation or detail? You don't think that maybe a, hey, by the way, I'm sorry about that is in order? Uh, hey, 
she really wanted to keep her name private. She really was unhappy about it. I had to do that. I did what I could for damage control. No, just, oh, she was the same next. And, and what's, what's wifey going to think? Jade wanted to be kept so private. You just admitted that your ex was in fact Jade Francis. Uh, so you basically just fully officially doxed her again. Um, why do you think she did that? Do you think she did that to get people talking? Do you think she did that because Jade won't talk to her and now Jade's going to hear about this and get a hold of Amber and say, what the hell? I, I told you you could say anything, but you know you weren't supposed to say who I was. Do you think this was a ploy to get Jade to get in contact with her? And then she could go, oh my God, well, it doesn't matter. They know anyways now. Why don't you just come back and let's work it out? Like what, what do you think the angle of her finally admitting that was? Bitch. You lied about having cancer. No, he hasn't. And I think that's just very low of him. Like I don't think she lied. See, that's the one thing. Like, I agree with almost everything Sabine says from just my two cents. I don't deny that Amber had cancer. She did show paperwork where there was cancer. But her cancer, and I'm not trying to downplay cancer, it wasn't very far along. And she was fortunate that it was a cancer that is very easily treated. Uh, a friend of our family, her daughter, who is actually thin and fit, uh, just had a, a full hysterectomy um, from, from having the same type of cancer Amber had. And she's doing well. She's recovering better. Going to her follow-ups and stuff, which Amber never did. So Amber could still have cancer growing in her. Uh, which I don't understand how that horrifies her. And, it, and if she does have cancer, like a secondary cancer, she has to realize she can never come on this channel and cry about it and go, oh my God, guys, I have cancer again. It's, it's in here or it's in this place or they think it was from my uterine cancer and stuff like that. And nobody's going to give her sympathy because she didn't lose weight to fit into the scans. She... um never did follow-up treatment and people are going to have no sympathy for her she hasn't lost weight she hasn't made her uh, diet better her lifestyle better or more active nobody is going to give her any sympathy if something like that happens again if she develops severe issues from uh, sleep apnea or develops diabetes nobody's going to feel bad for her so um but I, I, I don't think she lied about having cancer. She did have cancerous cells. Um, it wasn't like a pre-cancer type thing. I do believe she did have cancer. Luckily, like I said, it wasn't that far along. And um, she's doing nothing now to help herself and avoid getting it again. Especially because he still says quotes and does things that I do in my videos and his videos. It's just like, do you have a heart? like at all it'd be different like okay so it's okay it's people don't have a heart and they're mean if they troll amber and make fun of amber but amber's perfectly okay to say mean things and rude things about other people right <laughs> rules for 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 the but not for me right he was just like another youtuber who just wanted to talk shit but i did consider him my friend and i did talk to him about my cancer privately in text messages so it's just like for him to do something like that is just really i wouldn't really believe wrong. him unless but he like, actually he showed sure. the text like, messages be a good decent human being who is your favorite reactor in girl world definitely your mama hands down i feel like we don't really have anyone like that in the community someone who's willing to stand up towards bullies and how do you have a favorite amber if you don't watch anybody and you don't watch reaction channels and you don't read things about yourself how do you know all this youtubers who think that they're doing something good when they're really not they're just like attacking two individuals i noticed that a lot of the reaction channels they don't like to talk about the other reaction channels and if they do it's always like good things but it's like yo these reaction channels they're not perfect they do and say wrong things as well because we are humans that is just how we're programmed to make mistakes and to do things that we shouldn't but i think the difference is is that your mama's not afraid to say something while all the other reaction channels are very much scary cats for the lack of a better term minus all that i genuinely just think that your mama is highly come talk to me amber and see if i'm a scary cat i dare ya i mean i love his live streams and i watch every single one of them who is the last person that texted you so the last person that texted me was my valentine Do amber stop with this shit again the last person her. was my valentine call her her real name because let me tell you and this is like honesty guys serious here Amber's channel tanked so badly when she would not show Jade 
and Jade would not appear on camera and she lied and she made up all these nicknames and we didn't know her. Amber cannot do that again. Her next girlfriend has got to be somebody like Becky, you know, and, and Destiny where they're willing to be seen, known, on camera, interact with her. Amber's channel will not survive another relationship like that she won't even show her mom on camera and we know it's her mom she should be showing her her channel is not going to survive just doing this and showing just amber and little random two second clips of things it, it's it's gonna she's really gonna be hurting in the next couple of years if she tries to do this yes i do and i know some people are gonna come for me especially if you've uh, been watching me for about a decade because i remember one time i said like like i said like this was like a decade ago and one time i was like yeah i think you only need sex toys if like your sex life is like super boring girly pop i was just like delusional at the time i'm not delusional anymore a sex toy is amazing and i've been to that for years now but i'm just like speaking about it now what is the last thing you journaled about amber what sex toy okay i'm sorry but okay think about female sex toys <laughs> How is she going to use one? I'm sorry. She can't reach down there. She can't. Her belly, her gut, her, it's too big. It's too, her arms are the, the short arms of a five foot two person. I know mine are roughly the same size because I'm five foot, five foot one almost, you know? So my arms are roughly her size. She can't reach down there. <laughs> Hi, Minnie. Oh, so I journaled about a conversation that I will be having this Friday. It's actually a serious conversation that I'm having with someone. So I journaled a little bit about that and like just how I feel about it and maybe some like talking points that I would like to bring up. Will you show your partner in videos in the future? So this goes for anyone, uh, whether it's a family member, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friend, I will show you, you can be in my videos, you can be in all my videos, you can do whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want, but you guys know what I mean. Be all up in my videos. Like, I don't care, but it's only if you want to. I will never ever put someone in my videos that does not want to be in my video. I would love it would love it if my partner wanted to be part of my youtube channel but i understand if they wouldn't people are brutal and there's a difference between oh i'm gonna make fun of this i might make fun of your hair versus like i'm gonna talk to you and your family and your dog and your dog's kibbles like it's just like people be doxing like what doctors i have <laughs> that actually goes into the next question perfect segue amberlyn what really happened during the weight loss surgery era okay i specifically said repeatedly during that whole era i will explain later you guys will see why i'm upset later i can't tell you now but i'll tell you later later is here and i'm just gonna do it short and quick and to the point i could easily do a whole story time but i'm just not gonna even do that because i'm, I'm not gonna put my energy into this that hardcore because i just don't want to i did back then my energy was very much into this back then i was very upset so let's get into it so if you guys remember i came on my youtube and i said oh i can't get weight loss surgery until i don't binge for a whole year came out of nowhere it was confusing it was weird it made no sense but i held on to that and i said okay let's do it i don't even really believe that because there's no way for them to actually verify that you haven't binged unless you're in like a 24 hour a day monitored unit so you could have just came back for and said in a year okay hey i didn't binge you know what i mean it then i had an appointment with my dietitian and she said you're gonna come meet a surgeon because we need to talk to you about something. And this was before I was even supposed to meet the surgeon. Sorry, I itched right here, so that's why I'm super red and I just now noticed. My skin be sensitive. So anyways, I was gonna meet the surgeon even before I was supposed to. So long story short, hundreds and hundreds of people were emailing my surgeon, finding his Instagram and messaging him. They were contacting my surgeon's office through the phone, through messages, any way that people could contact my surgeon, they were finding it and they were doing it. So how did people find out who my surgeon was? A reaction channel. No, Amber, it wasn't a reaction channel. You bragged about this super amazing world-class famous surgeon and by process, and you've talked about the thousand pound sisters and a thousand pound best friends and stuff. It was easy to deduce Dr. Smith's office was within a 20 or 30 minute drive of your house. It was near you. It fit the criteria. It was absolutely easy to see who you were going to because you were bragging about how you have to have the best and he's the best and he's so well known. He's famous. It, 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 you could have figured that out if you barely had two brain cells to rub together. How did that reaction channel find out who my surgeon was? Because I read maybe two sentences of an email that was sent to me by my surgeon's office. This reactor wanted to know so badly who my surgeon was that they faked wanting to get weight loss surgery just so they could get that email back to them to confirm who my weight loss surgeon was. And once they confirmed who my weight loss surgeon was, what did they do? 
They doxed him. They said, this is Amber Lynn's surgeon. This is who he is. Blah, 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 blah. Well, my surgeon was Dr. Smith. Um, the same surgeon. Amber, I'm sure he kind of didn't care in a way because this is a surgeon who goes on TV, okay? The publicity is good for him. The problem is, is the stuff you were saying about him and his program and especially the program and the dietitian, um, you were making them look very bad. And you were making them, especially, like I said, the program, but especially the dietitian, you were making her look like an absolute moron. You were doing that clinic a disservice. And who did Tammy Slayton surgery? I have met him. He is wonderful. He was understanding. So when I met him and we had that meeting, I explained to him everything. He explained to me the type of messages and things that he was receiving. It was people saying how I binged and I lie, I lie, I lie. So you do, but Amber, he probably didn't have a problem with the fact that people knew who he was. Like I said, for, for somebody like that, publicity is good. It's the fact that he was tell they were telling him, look, she's wasting your time. She's wasting space in your program that somebody who really deserves it should have. She's not trying. She's not going gonna do it she's gonna bail out she's lying to you you know she's not following the program she's gonna gain weight and everything everybody said is true that is what happened that is how it played out you wasted his time and their resources so not only was i fighting for myself to get weight loss surgery but i was fighting against hundreds of people because of a careless reaction channel i was pissed i was hurt because it's like, react to me all day. Go for it. I really don't care at this point. But stop getting in the fucking way of my life. Like, Okay, but how much in the way did they get? Because you didn't go through with it. You didn't go through with it. You didn't try. You didn't even lose a full six pounds for the whole year or eight months or whatever that you were in the program. You couldn't even maintain a one pound a week or one pound a month weight loss. So, and you never had intentions of going through with it. So how much did it really affect you, Amber? You're mad because what people were saying that you were going to do was true. You got in the way of my life. So once the surgeon heard about all this and heard my side of the story, that is when things were changed. And he was like, you know what? A year is way too long. He explained to me that they've never been in this type of situation where like someone who was well known gets doxxed and now he's receiving all of these. Yeah. So you know what? What did he do? Gave you a chance to get some therapy, prove to him you were willing to stick to somewhat of a diet plan and lose a little bit of weight and then he would have operated and you still didn't do it. You still didn't do it. Every time you came back with a diet plan, you explained, okay, they want me to eat this much protein, this many carbs, this many calories, this much fat. Every single time, every month or so, you went back. Oh, we're not going to count calories this time. They just want me to stay here and do this. Every single time you went back, they dumbed it down because you kept, one, not doing it, two, gaining weight. So they kept dumbing it down to the point where they were like, we don't give a shit what you eat. Just don't gain weight. And you still couldn't do it. You still gained weight. Okay, so you made their program look bad and they bent over backwards just to try to get you to show some semblance of self-control. If you would have just lost two pounds, he probably would have did it because you said he wanted to do the Sadie surgery on you. That is done specifically most of the time on non-compliant patients to, to, to help with the non-compliance. So he saw you were non-compliant messages and calls and stuff like not only like was that not fair to me but it wasn't fair to them as professionals like they had to deal with all of these messages that's not fair to them as i speak on this i also want to thank zachary michael because he knew about all of this i actually told him in private um i didn't give him like the rundown and give him every tiny detail zachary but... michael's okay but he's another one i want those ones is kind of like an amber butt kisser <laughs> he knew who my surgeon was i went back to try to find the dms but i don't know a lot of dms were deleted i don't know if it was because of him or because i had him blocked at one point it's a mess i do be blocking i'm not gonna lie but just out of respect i'm not gonna share our dms because i feel like that's low life um i know reaction channels love to share dms it's like their go-to it's like oh amber lynn messaged me let me show you it's like for real now come on but yeah zachary michael knew and he didn't say a word and in his reactions he acted like he had no idea uh and i feel like a lot of people might um ask this no that's not the reason why i didn't end up getting weight loss surgery because i was still going through with it like dr smith is so freaking amazing you didn't get your surgery because you do not want to have anything 
that hinders your ability to gorge yourself and you didn't want to give up the food you love. That's why you quit Ozempic. That's why you certainly wouldn't get something like a surgery that removes half your stomach instantly. You didn't do it because you did not want to and you never had any intentions of doing it and you don't want to lose any meaningful weight, Amber. You don't want to change your habits. You don't want to give up your food. You don't want to stop being a glutton and that's just how it is. Like he was so sweet, such a gentleman. He was rooting for me through and through. Like I wish more than anything, if I ever want weight loss surgery again, that he will be the surgeon because it's just like, he is incredible. I ultimately did not get weight loss surgery because I didn't feel ready. I, I didn't, I genuinely didn't. I didn't feel like I had the support. Amber, you could have been ready. You didn't get it because of what I just said. And I will not believe not one other thing. I won't believe she wants it until she actually goes through with it someday. The work that I needed because me and my ex, my now ex, we were just going through a lot at the time and it was super expensive, like $35,000. Like it was just like a lot of different things that were causing me to be like, this is not the right choice right now. Don't so blame, don't blame Jade. She's not the one who, who kept you like, you could have went to bed at night when she did and stayed awake during the day and said you chose to stay up at night and binge while she was asleep because she had to work. She was willing to pay for the surgery with you. She wanted you to go out on walks and be more active. D don't blame this on her. If you were truly in it, she I feel like she would have to some degree been there for you. And the fact of the matter is, is at the end of the day, no matter what, you had to do it yourself. You're the one who had to say no and stop eating the food. And you didn't want to. Jade wasn't forcing it down your throat. Maybe not all the time. It goes into what we were just talking about. Is weight loss surgery something you will try again? So right now, the answer is no. But will it always be no? I really don't know. But right now, that's not like in the cards for me, honestly. So the last question is, what's your ideal sexual fantasy? Tie me up. Uh, put my panties on my mouth. This is disgusting, guys. I I can't listen to this. I gotta go. I'm gonna go. Um, her fantasies to tie me up, put my panties in my mouth. Okay, so what? So you got a grape fetish? You gonna go talk to Sala behind Foodie's back now too, like you did Nader or Natter or whatever the hell his name is? Foodie, I'd watch out. <laughs> um, <laughs> kidding. A and I'm sorry. Again, Amber's not into this stuff. She just thinks it makes her sound kinky and hardcore. Amber can't have normal snacks because we have to freaking censor ourselves. Um, let alone the, the weird, unique, kinky stuff where you're like arms and legs are splayed out and pulled and twisted and turned and tied. Uh, no, it's just not happening. Amber, get over it. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Let me know what you think about this one. I will see you in the next one. I'll be recording. Maybe I'll do a couple more reacts while I, I'm playing Paleo because then I can kill two birds with one stone. Um, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.